best lighting ever. Hey guys, so today I had my Telebears phase one. And Telebears is the enrollment system that UC Berkeley uses. So basically you have your Telebears phase one and your Telebears phase two. And in your phase one, you can only sign up for a certain amount of classes. And then in your phase two, you can sign up for all the rest. So basically you have to strategize and how you're going to sign up for your classes. So during your phase one, you probably want to sign up for classes that are going to fill up quickly or classes that are required for your major or graduation requirements, whereas in phase two you can sign up for your electives and fun things and things that don't really matter if you don't get in or not. So today I had that and my telebears actually went really smoothly. It was the smoothest telebears that I've ever done because usually when I have telebears I'm signing up really quickly and there are only a couple spots left in the class and then it turns out that I can't sign up for a class because of something some stupid thing and then I have to go look for alternatives and I don't get the classes that I want and then I have to do backups and all this stuff. So that didn't happen this time and it was really relaxing and a little anticlimactic and I was a little disappointed because I was going to make a whole video about the stress of telebears and then it wasn't stressful this time. So that video did not pan out. So instead I'm making this video because there was still one thing that I was really upset about on my telebears and that was that I need an advisor code to sign up for my classes and I just think that's silly. So I'm not exactly sure if it's just me who needs an advisor code or anyone who's a double major or if every person in the English department or every person in the nutrition department needs an advisor code. But I feel that if every person did need an advisor code, that would just be too much work for the university to do. And I assume that at the very least, you only start needing an advisor code when you've declared your major, because before I did not need one, and now that I've finally declared, I do need one. So the advisor code is just silly to me because it's like I have to go out of my way to go to my advisor's office hours and sometimes, at least for me, I have an extremely busy and tight schedule so it's kind of difficult to go to one of their office hours if those hours are in between all of my stuff. And then when I go to office hours, I just sit down and they say, so what are you signing up for? And then I say, well, I'm signing up for the exact classes that I told you I was going to sign up for when I petitioned for a double major. And then they say, oh, great, so here's your code. And I'm like, what? Why did I have to do this? You didn't advise me. You didn't give me any advice or say I should change something. You just, like, why would I not be taking the classes that I said I was going to take. Or if I was changing those classes, which I am going to do for next next semester, then why do you think I would not have planned ahead and know that I wouldn't be able to graduate with a certain schedule? I don't know. It's kind of like I can see how advisors are very helpful for people who are confused about graduation requirements and they have specific questions, but if I don't feel like I have a question, then I don't want to be forced to talk to you or go to your office hours, especially if it's only going to take one minute of my time. I mean, the actual meeting is one minute, but it might take like 20 minutes to walk to school and then walk back, or I might miss the bus and then I would lose half an hour at my internship or work. So why do I have to go to your advisor hours? I kind of have the same feeling with like restaurants and waiters and waitresses in that I really don't like waiters coming up to me and saying, how's the food? Because I feel that you're kind of pressuring me in a sense. And it's like, well, what do you expect me to say? Do you want me to say that I hate it and to send it back? Because I would never say that. So then I just have to say, oh, it's good. And then, of course, sometimes when you actually need waiters to get things, then they don't, they're not there because they think that they've done their job by checking up and asking you how the food is. Apparently though, according to Simon and Martina's videos, waiters and waitresses in Korea only come when you want them to because they have the little buttons. And I don't see why the US can't have that, but I guess it probably has to do with getting tips. But uh, I would probably give you a better tip if you were very friendly in the few interactions that I had with you, rather than if you had multiple interactions with me that were just so-so. 
so yeah that's how you get a better tip from me and I still don't want to go to my advisor's office hours and they lock you out of the whole system if you don't have your advisor code and you have to go to both advisors and this was especially bad because there's one advisor who I won't say but I have one advisor and I just hate him so much because he's so unfriendly and so unhelpful. And now I have to go to him only once more for spring 2015 enrollment to get my advisor code. And then I will never, hopefully, have to see him again. But yeah, so that's how I spent my day. And now I'm making dinner. So I'm going to go. But I hope you're having a wonderful April, and I will see you tomorrow.